Welcome again. Now today we are continuing our um, this bacterial exotoxin and on which we have now reached to page number 133 that is the step 1 page 21 uh, revision section where we are uh, discussing about the bacterial exotoxin and now we are on we have previously discussed about the bacterial exotoxin like um, this was the protein synthesis inhibitor that is called bacterium diphtheri, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and then Sigella in enterohemorrhagic E. coli. Then there was an increased fluid secretion due to enterotoxin E. coli, anthrax, cholera, and partitious. Then there was a, another group that inhibited the release of neurotransmitter that was the Clostridium group that is Clostridium detani and Clostridium botulinum. Now you were on the topic that is continuation of the same bacterial exotoxin where we are discussing about the bacterial exotoxin that lies the seminal brain. So there are certain exotoxins, there are a certain toxin that are released by the bacteria outside the body, outside from the bacterial cell and that uh, gets uh, spread into the environment and then they lyse the cell membrane of the, those like RBC that's coming in contact with them. So the cell membrane that get lysed by the two group of organisms, there are two bacteria, one is the Colostradium perfinges and another is the Streptococcus pyogenes. So this is Colostradium perfinges and Streptococcus pyogenes, this release the toxin, Colostradium perfinges release the toxin known as the alpha toxin, as the Streptococcus pyogenes release the toxin known as the Streptolysin O toxin. This both toxin has the mechanism by which they lysis the cell membrane. So let's talk about the Colostradium perfinges. Colostradium perfinges, you can see that Colostradium perfinges have alpha toxin and in alpha toxin there is the release of this phospholipase, this is the enzyme, lecithinase. So, this toxin, what is this toxin? Toxin in an enzyme. What is enzyme? This is the phospholipase or another name is lecithinase. So these are the enzyme. What do this enzyme will do? That will degrade the tissue and the cell membrane. So it will degrade the our tissue and the cell membrane. So if you, the wound get infection, suppose you can imagine the Colostradium perfinges usually cause the wound infection where there is the formation of this gas gangrene. So what happened? This enzyme is this toxin is released. This toxin is enzyme that degrades the tissue and cell membrane. So the, this the, the infection get spread from one cell to another and consecutively to the it can spread into the large area. It can damage in once it started in the focal point but get spread and then causing the damage to the ground substance like tissue and the cell membrane and in this way they get spread. So degradation, what happened? This enzyme has degraded in the phospholipid. So this is, since this is a phospholipase, so lipase will degrade the lipid, the phospholipid. So phospholipids was degraded, there will be the myomycosis. There was the necrosis of the muscle, causing the gas gangrene. And hemolysis, that leads to the double hemolysis on the blood agar. So if you see, the growth of this colostrium perfusus on the blood agar, then there will be the double zone of hemolysis. And why this is due? Due to the lysis of the RBC, there is the blood agar, there will be the RBC, and the RBC get lysed by whom? By this enzyme, that is this toxin. Why this toxin is lysed? Because it is an enzyme, and it has lysed the RBC, and there is this, there is the zone of hemolysis in the blood agar. Clinically, it has a toxin that lyses the cell membrane and tissue. So because of that, there will be the degradation of the phospholipid of our cell, skin, and the tissues. So there will be the myo necrosis and gas gangrene will be found. Microbiological point of view, because of this toxin, they, we can demonstrate on a blood agar by the presence of the hemolysis. Similarly, there is another bacteria which is a very common infection. This is the Streptococcus pyogenes. The Streptococcus infection that release toxin known as the streptolysin O. What does this streptolysin do? This streptolysin is the protein that degrades the cell membrane and how we can they actually degrade the RBC, that lyse the RBC and that contrib contributes to the beta hemolysis. If you if you can see, then this is the country this is the lysis of the RBC that contributes to the beta hemolysis. If you grow a blood agar plate and this is the bacteria, so around this there will be a, a zone of hemolysis. There will be clearing around it. So why this has been clear? Because this Toxin that is the, that has the capacity to lysis the cell membrane has lysis the RBC. And since the RBC cell membrane has lysed, now the RBC has been cleared up around this factor here, and there will be a clear zone of hemolysis. This is due to the presence of streptolysin. Now, this will be the indirect evidence to demonstrate one of the diseases known as the rheumatic fever. Since this Streptolysin O is released into, into your body that can act as a foreign body. Foreign body becomes an antigen. If it is an antigen, then body will act against it and form the antibody. The antibody is known as the anti-streptolysin O that is called the 
host antibody against the toxin cause the anti streptolysin O. So the anti streptolysin O is formed. Why anti streptolysin O is formed? Because that is antigen. What antigen is that? Streptolysin O. So where, where, from where this streptolysin O has come from? It has come from the bacteria that it is streptospiasinous. So we have now tracked down, okay, now ASO, that is anti streptolysin O is present in the body. It means that he or she has this streptolysin O be released from the bacteria, which bacteria is streptococcus species. So it indicates that this patient has been infected with the streptococcus and developed this rheumatic fever. So demonstrating the ASO titer used to diagnose the rheumatic fever in, in the in the in the region. So if a baby or a person get infected with a streptococcus infection, after two or three weeks they develop the rheumatic fever. Why they develop the rheumatic fever? Due to the bacterial infection. How we can demonstrate that? We can demonstrate by one of the way by tracking its toxin release. The toxin that has released, that is the streptolysin O, that is released in the body, the body acts against it and form the antibody against this streptolysin O and form the anti streptolysin O. So it is antibody against this streptolysin O. And since this, this titer you can demonstrate in the blood, now you can check the blood and you can found this ASO, then you can think, you can correlate, okay, this ASO has come because this streptolysin O was in the body. Already, although after two or three weeks, this streptolysin O will be not present in the body. You are not going to measure that. You are measuring indirectly the antibody against the streptolysin O. So anti ASO. So once ASO is present, it indicates the streptolysin O was there. Since o, streptolysin O was there, because it is only released from the streptococcal infection or streptococcal infection, so we can correlate this rheumatic fever is developed due to the streptococcus infection, that is the pharyngitis, streptococcal pharyngitis. Do not confuse with this with the immune complex of the post streptococcal glomerulonephritis. So, I hope you have understood this is a simple one. Then we will go and talk about the important topic, and that important topic is actually superantigen that we will discuss in the next lecture.